So I'm going to now be talking about imaging in liver and kidney transplantation. And I think it's probably worth pointing out that really ultrasound is remaining the pivotal examination, both in the immediate post-operative period and going further when it comes to both kidney and liver transplants. And so we'll be starting with kidneys. I think a couple of things about the renal transplant that make it a positive win for ultrasound. First of all, they're typically located superficially in the right or left lower quadrant in the iliac fossa. So the imaging of the kidney transplant is usually excellent. And just by way of normalcy, pointing out, as you would expect, both the kidney and the liver have typical low resistance waveforms when they're evaluated internally. Now, one of the things that we look for when we do these, and we'll talk more about this later, uh, remember we do have an excellent ability to really image with color or power Doppler all the way to the periphery of the kidney. And so taking pictures like you see on the right really doesn't help you by looking at these little vessels. You really wanna be able to see a nice color power Doppler image all the way out to the periphery if you're going to evaluate for the possibility of focal infarction. Now, when I think in terms of renal transplants, I usually think in terms of grayscale findings or anatomic findings and then vascular. And of course, the fact that color Doppler and spectral Doppler are available to us uh, really makes ultrasound the ultimate evaluation because you can see not only these peritransplant collections, hydronephrosis, other anatomic abnormalities, but of course, it is really necessary to be able to interrogate the vessels of all of these transplants. So when I think of peritransplant collections, there are basically four types that are common, hematomas, urinomas, lymphocytes, and abscess. Now, there are a lot of crossover features when it comes to identifying or, or saying which of these we're dealing with. There are some that are kind of unique and may point you in the right direction, but a lot of these things really overlap. Remember, Hematomas typically are both either surgical, post-surgical in the immediate post-operative period, or probably more commonly post-biopsy. Early on, remember, blood tends to be echogenic, but then later on becomes hypo or anechoic. So there is an evolution in the appearance from more echogenic and solid appearing early on to more cystic looking later. Urinomas are a kind of dreaded complication. They are, the imaging findings are not specific. Typically, there will be associated hydronephrosis. Lymphocytes, again, typically occur weeks to months post-surgery. They're not a post-operative complication. And of course, they are from the disrupted lymphatics that occur when the graft is placed in the iliac fossa. Typically, again, typically, multiple internal septae are present, and the problem with lymphocytes is they may be difficult to get rid of. They, you may put a drain in them, but oftentimes they will recur, and some of them actually need to be surgically treated with marsupialization. Probably the most dreaded of the post-operative complications is the development of an abscess, particularly in this immunosuppressed population. Again, there's nothing specific here, although I suppose the presence of air is quite specific. So if you see air, unless it's an immediate post-operative collection, if you see air developing in a collection, this is really a probably pretty good sign that you're dealing 